What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hop Geek News, a podcast that talks about comic books, movies, TV shows, and we feature a beer of the week. This week's episode, we have a really fun one for you because we have Kenny Porter, Ryan Stegman, and Tyrell Cannon all joining our our show today. Uh, they're going to be coming on to talk to Schlub, which we've had Kenny and Tyrell on before, but this time we have Stegman joining the party. They're going to be talking about the trade that is getting ready to come out in April, and uh, this is a really fun six-issue comic book. So before we dive into that, uh, go ahead, Hopskeek News, any podcasting platform, any social media platform, please do us a favor, subscribe there. You can find all of our stuff. We just rolled out the new Cantina Hour, which comes infrequently right now. It's been every week, uh, usually 7, 8 p.m. Eastern. We usually roll it out, but the way you know that is if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you subscribe to Facebook, whatever it may be good discussions and then if you want to support the show patreon.com slash hops geek news that's where you can support the show it goes into things such as the cantina hour or ad free episodes on patreon and all of that good stuff like i said i'm matt with me is lauren and my beer of the week comes from delaware this week it's called secret machine triple berry from dewey beer out of delaware it is a blueberry blackberry raspberry smoothie beer coming at seven percent uh, i grabbed this one because my beer fridge is like nothing but stouts i am running severely low on ipas and beers and i have one ipa from benchtop but i've been on a benchtop kick and so i figured why not grab this one out and uh, dewey kind of makes me think of special officer dewey out of the scary movie films which coincidentally enough our dentist friend roger kind of also reminds me of that so lauren what are you drinking today I'm drinking Benchtop, actually, funny enough. Uh, I'm <laughs> drinking Gong Theory. It's an IPA you sent me that is 6.5%. It says it is, <coughs> excuse me, thoughtfully brewed in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, this is very delicious. I accidentally overflowed it, but it is fantastic. Yeah, and they make really good beers. I have a Proven Theory I was going to drink, which is an IPA of theirs, but uh, I didn't. So I like at least, they actually have the directions. Yeah, so it's a great beer. My beer doesn't really pair with what we're talking about. However, it's blue and pretty. So I poured it in my glass to mouth glass with Cad Bane, who's blue and pretty. And, you know, Cad Bane looks like somebody who might need to go to the dentist. It does look like I'm going to tie it in. That does look like, yeah. It does. But yeah, normally if you're first time on the show, thanks for hanging out. We go over what we've been drinking. We go over typically what we've messed up on, looked into. We roll into some news and what we've been reading or watching. Uh, this week, we're perfect little creatures. Um, however, we do want to point out that if you head to our YouTube channel, we have our Fugitive Poems Cantina Hour is up there on there. Go check it out with Christian and James. And then also Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips, the creators of Image Comics Enfield Gang Massacre, which the final order cutoff is today, March 4th, and it's going to be rolling out April 9th. The trade is six issues of Western pure bloody fun. Make sure you pick that up and uh, go listen to that episode. Hear all about that because it was a fantastic episode. Really great creators. They are awesome dudes. Can't wait to have them back. Now, let's roll into what I've been reading or watching. Uh, I did watch an Apple TV show that I can't talk about yet until next week. I am so excited Jeez. to talk about this. Just know that. I can't wait for that one. And uh, I've been watching Supernatural and I just saw um, Kane die by Dean's hand. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, is he dead? I don't know. We'll see. But Rowena is annoying the life out of me. I cannot stand really? Rowena. She, I, every time she's on screen, my skin crawls. She's just annoying. Aww. Can't do it. But maybe she'll grow on me. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I hope so. I've also read The Flash issue six from DC Comics. Really good uh, issue. Kind of a crisis of feelings of sorts between Linda and Wally and Barry. That sets up some cool things. And then I read Spider-Punk issue one, which kind of gives us like this cool uh, Avengers. They've got like Miss Marvel, a take on Captain America's in it and Hobie, of course. And that was a fun comic book. And that was all a nerd initiative. You can check out all of our reviews, the links in our, our bio. So what have you been reading or watching? Um, so I reviewed three comics for nerd initiative this week. One of them was Edenwood by image comics. Uh, this is, Story and art is by Tony S. Daniel. This one's been a lot of fun. I know I've mentioned it on here before, but it's like a dystopian future that's covered with like demons and witches and the government is still around and they're like negotiating with demons. And the main character, Ryan, who's like a teenager, but he's also a demon hunter. He just found out something about his heritage 
that was very surprising and obviously them conflicted. And then this last one was on issue five now that just ended. It ended with an ending that you're like, wait, what the frick just happened? Like, what else are we missing now? So it's a lot of fun. Uh, Tony Stan, you know, also does Noctera with Scott Snyder. And that's another fantastic, like, what's going on? What's actually happening? You know, it's always fun when you think you know what's going on, but you don't really know what's going on. Um, Another one I reviewed this week is, of course, my favorite, Wolverine. It is issue 44. This is the run I've been reading, I think, since 2020 with Benjamin Percy. This specific issue is Ben Percy and Victor Laval. Laval. Uh, It's in the middle of the Sabretooth War. And, like, there's so many other comics that tie into this. But you really don't need to read all of them unless you want to. Like I read the saber tooth um, run before this. That basically just shows how he managed to get this team together and get all these different saber teeth. They somebody even makes a joke like, "What are these saber teeth?" Like he goes around the multiverse and collects different saber teeth to go and torture Logan because he loves tor- torturing Logan. Weird. You don't have to read that. You can, and you even if you don't want to read all forty-four issues of Wolverine, you don't have to. It's on issue four of the actual Saber Two War. If you just want to jump in and get a fun Wolverine story, uh, but Wolverine is just—I mean, he's full on Wolverine. He's devastated. His heart's broken, and he's ready to go full on Berserker rage. Well, so, good. I'm glad you don't have to read all of them because sometimes that can be kind of daunting uh, for yeah. some folks. But that I mean, is, I is doing, run. Though. Oh yeah, it's it's good, Ben is a killer writer x-men wolverine they just kind of he he kills it man um i can't really think of anybody else to take over that mantle right now he does such a good job uh yeah. but um, yeah you know. <laughs> anything else you've been reading or watching oh yeah i thought you were going to keep praising ben percy with wolverine when not and i was here for it uh the other thing that i reviewed this week was thrawn alliances issue two so this is continuing from the books and so if you've been following us for a while you know that i read all three of the books last year and did like a review and was like, everybody should read these books. Thrawn is a fantastic character. I loved seeing his personality and his intelligence in these books. And well, if you don't really have time to read the novels then you should definitely pick up these comics. So they did one comic for the first book and this was issue two for the second book and they're not done. But what's fun about issue two, and I know I've said this before and I need to actually go buy the actual print one and bring it to Disney and do a comparison because this second book takes place on Batu, which is the fictional Star Wars world that is in Disney's Hollywood Studios here in Orlando and at Disneyland out in Anaheim, California. <laughs> and it goes back and forth between Thrawn and Anakin Skywalker helping each other out to Darth Vader and Grand Admiral Thrawn helping each other out. The first time Anakin just kind of looked at Padme because she was there. The second time Palpatine had sensed a disturbance in the Force And now that Thrawn is part of the Empire, he was sent to go basically help Vader. But what I love about this is they're both so intelligent, but on very, very different levels. Like, obviously, Anakin has no emotional intelligence, but he is very instinctually intelligent. And I don't just think that's his, you know, Metachlorian count or whatever. He can also, obviously, he can see things before they happen, but he can also know, okay, if this is going to happen, this is the best way to do that. And whereas Thrawn is completely thought everything out. He's so strategic, so intelligent, and it's fun to see them work together and kind of respect each other a little bit more every time they see somebody do something that like, I wouldn't have done that, but that was a really good idea. It so, is. Yeah. That's I love cool. Seeing them together. I kind of wish we would have gotten some more of their uh, relationship in some of the, you know, other medias and who knows we might with, with yeah, Ron. I mean, Hayden Christensen goes, is yeah. He, yeah, that would be cool. It's true. He's been all about it. And, uh, who knows, man, he, I can't wait. We'll, we'll see. I haven't watched a bad batch yet. I'll be honest. So I, oh, I, I did watch bad batch. I'm liking bad batch. I like it. I just, man, I I've been blowing through the Apple TV cause I got a few things I got to write up for nerd initiative. And so I haven't gotten to it yet, but, Let's roll into some I like news Omega's real quick. hair. I gotta say, I oh, love yeah? that her hair is longer now. I did not like her <laughs> haircut in the last two yeah. seasons. Interesting. It was like a can I speak to the manager haircut on this? It was, yeah. I mean, so yeah. now she's got a low ponytail, and I think what also makes her look older. So I think I think they're showing that. Well, it's been you know, some time, time has passed. Has yeah. Passed. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, let's roll into some news real quick. What news do you have for us? I really do not have much news. Uh Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, March 22nd. And we mentioned so that before, excited for that movie. 
just a little update. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem sequel. So they announced a date, but it's so far out. It's October 9th, 2026. So I don't even know why they're announcing it yet. But there you go. Uh, I did Tron see that. Yeah. Eris will release in 2025. Did you know this was happening? I thought I heard like a rumor or something like that, but I, I'm not a Tron fan. I'm going to be honest. Like I just couldn't get into the movies at all. So I didn't. I probably just dismissed it. So I watched both of the movies years ago. But I had no idea they were doing this again. And now I'm like, oh, is that because I thought it was odd when Disneyland was like, let's make a tra- Tron ride. Right. You know, next to Space I thought Mountain. that was weird, too. Yeah. So I guess that maybe that's why. Um, but it's going to be starring Jared Leto, Evan Peters, Cameron Monaghan, Greta Lee, Jillian Anderson and Jodie Turner Smith. So that's a pretty decent cast. Yeah, the cast is pretty stacked for that. I will say we could do without Jared Leto, but whatever. Yeah, I liked him as Hatbox Ghost. I thought he did a good job there. Yeah, because you don't have to actually see his stupid face, but. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, and then my last piece of news, which you, this is definitely all you. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Oh, this is sad. We'll reunite as Batman and the Joker for one final project. Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 3. Because I did hear Mark Hamill won't record anymore without Kevin Conroy. He's not going to know, but I think they obviously recorded the lines and everything yeah. like that. Long ago before Kevin Conroy passed. And so, so that's, that's the last sweet. one, man. It is sad. It's bittersweet. And uh, it's like... Another ending to our childhood, you know, the animated series for Batman is my comfort show, got me through some really tough times, and uh, this is going to be the end of that. I haven't watched the first part yet. I'm waiting for it to come on digital, and so I can't wait to watch that. Um, But some news that I have, so the EA Mandalorian open world game was canceled. EA just went through some massive layoffs because any Star Wars, yeah, Star Wars, if they pretty much make an announcement, I'm not going to believe Star Wars until it actually happens at this point, but... I'm not going to go too much into that. DreamWorks announced DreamWorks World at Universal, which is going to include like a Shrek land. Uh, Trolls is going to be a part of it, which is pretty cool. I'm a, you know, Shrek, man. It's it's Shrek and Donkey. What are you doing in my swamp? So we're going to get some of that. Uh, My daughter's obviously loves Trolls and my my son was into Trolls. So we're probably going to be pretty pumped. Wait, is this going to be at Universal or at Epic? I thought it said Universal. Oh, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Universal. Um, James Gunn dropped a new Superman Legacy update today with the with the S, the chest. Uh, the Legacy portion has been dropped from the title. It is now just called Superman, which I think is going to work so much better. The suit looks, uh, from the glimpse we got, looks freaking rad. Uh, because today when we're recording, it is obviously Superman's birthday. So, uh, you know, James Gunn had to sprinkle a little bit of that happy birthday action in there for us. And then I have a couple things. So Awesome Con is taking place Friday, March 8th. At 1.30, uh, myself and Tony from Nerd Initiative are going to be doing a compounding the MCU panel where we think talk about kind of where the future phases of Marvel is going to go in the movies. And uh, it's going to be taking place, like I said, 1.30, right after the con opens on Friday. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Come find us. Check our socials for the room number and make sure you're there. And then uh, we have two Galaxy Con panels in Richmond on the 15th. We at 8.30 have a panel on comic books you should be reading, which Kyle Higgins is going to be joining us to uh, do that panel, which is going to be pretty freaking awesome. I just kind of threw that out there to him, and he was like, dude, I'm in. Let's do it. So Kyle Higgins is going to be joining us for that panel, and then the very next night we have a Batman celebrating the history of the Dark Knight taking place, and then Megan from the Mediaverse uh, podcast and Vigilantes podcast, she's going to be joining me actually for those to kind of help me out. And so be stay tuned f- for our, all our socials. We're going to be putting all, a lot of the video out there. My friend's going to come and video it. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming up. But light news day, light news week for us this week. And it is universal. You were right. I was right about something for once. Yay. Because it opens, yeah, this summer. Well, it's just everything I've been hearing lately has been epic. Like they're doing that whole how to right. train dragon thing. And the, they're doing droid videos. And people are theorizing on what's going on. There's going to be another. I think it's Fantastic Beasts area. So we're hearing a lot of that lately. Yeah, it's... Uh, Pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited for that one because uh, Universal is going to be opening up the Super Mario World too pretty soon down there. So a lot of cool things, a lot of fun things, a lot of cool panels taking place on our end as well. So make sure you subscribe to us. But we kind of uh, went through our segments a little fast because we have a couple guests that are going to be joining us. So stay tuned. We are going to be right back with Ryan Stegman, Kenny Porter, and Tyrell Cannon from Image Comics, The Schlub. 
Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Like I said, we have some three fantastic heroes have joined the show. You've seen two of these guys before. Kenny and Tyrell were both on previous talking issue one with Tyrell of the Schlub, and we talked issue two with Kenny. Well, now uh, Kenny was kind enough to hook it up to where we got all three of these amazing guys to come here and talk the schlub as the trade will be dropping April 23rd, six issues. You know, you've heard us rave about it. It is well worth it, but don't take it from the two of us. We're going to hear it straight from the horse's mouth itself. So before we get started, welcome back to the show, Tyrell and Kenny, and then uh, Ryan, welcome. First time. How's Thank it going? Um, kind of introduce yourself and uh, tell if people have been living under a rock and they for some reason haven't seen all the amazing comics you're out there creating. Go ahead and give yourself a little background. All right. So uh, I'm Ryan and I, I draw. Um, well, I've been drawn from Marvel for like 100 years now. Um, but, you know, you great for your fun. age. <laughs> uh, the most popular stuff I've done would be Superior, Spider-Man, Venom. You know, I've kind of done a little bit of everything, uh, and I did Vanish at Image Comics and, um, you know, then have uh, branched out into writing here with Kenny on The Schlub. Nice. Yeah, I know that, uh, man, you've you've been killing it out there. I always love seeing all the, the art and drawings that you post and all the comics that you wonderfully get to do. I mean, if people haven't checked out any of these three guys, I mean, gosh, it's kind of honestly feels like an all-star team in my opinion and mm -hmm. Tyrell and Kenny welcome back to the show I want to say thanks for agreeing to come back and what's been new Kenny we'll start with you anything new been happening how has everything been going lately oh thanks man yeah it's great to be back um especially fun to be back with both Tyrell and Brian too uh these have been going great uh run a Superboy wrapped up the schlub wrapped up uh both are coming out pretty soon close to each other collected i'm excited to talk about the schlub for people to go out and pick up the collection if they didn't pick up the issues yet uh but yeah things have been awesome and it's it's been great to be able to work together with like two close friends to make this book and it's so cool that it's finally going to be collected out on shelves and comic book stores and traditional bookstores and stuff so i'm jazzed nice yeah it's it's amazing tyrell Welcome back to the show, man. Uh, what, how's everything been going? You're muted. He's muted. Uh, oh, Tyrell, no. I knew you were going to Oh, do Tyrell. This. You're muted. I'm not muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for having me back, uh, even if I can't figure out my controls. It's been one of those days. Uh, no, things are great. I'm very excited for the Schlub trade to come out. Uh, I think that's really going to be a fun way for people to read the whole series. Um, I've been working on my own stuff, so it's been really, really good since I finished the schlub. I've been working on my sci-fi comic, Eris, and I should have a new release of that coming very soon. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just digging into that, which has been really nice to sort of, uh, you know, goof off with my own thing for a minute. Yeah. It's, uh, I know you've been sharing a lot of artwork, a lot of commissions. Um, you have some commissions that just recently opened up for C2E2 as well, correct? Right, yeah, I just opened up a list for C2E2. I'll be there this year. Actually, all three of us, I believe, will be at C2E2. I did see so that, you, yes. If you want to get your books signed, it would be a great show to come to. But yeah, I will be at C2E2, have a commission list open, and a bunch of other new fun stuff at the show. Heck yeah. Are you guys doing a panel together any chance? Or are they at least going to hopefully have you guys close by so if the, everybody wants to kind of just run down the aisle they can get all signatures for the schlub we are doing a panel actually we've got approved for a whole schlub panel so we're going to be doing that at c2e2 so people can come there check it out we talk about the schlub how we made it we'll talk about that a bit today answer all the all the raving fans questions uh we'll be very excited about it it'll be fun to be able to do that i love that show too so it's great to be able to do panels and stuff there it's un oh, yeah. unlikely we'll all be seated together though it'll probably be more of a pokemon go situation if you want to get a signature <laughs> if you want to get it well, that makes it yeah. fun. It's like a scavenger hunt of, <laughs> all right i got i got this one and then whenever the person gets the third and final thing you know they they evolve a little bit but uh yeah dudes that's exciting like chicago first of all is amazing i love that city a ton um and kenny i know you're like are you making it out there that's the the one con i can't just because there's so many cons smashed in you know megacon i went down to last month and then the next two weekends are awesome con and galaxy con richmond so my wife's already 
on me about and not every weekend's a comic con. I know. Okay. <laughs> it could be. I've it could there. be. <laughs> and At uh least but you no. get to go to the next one. I don't. So that's true. Lauren's going to like Puerto Rico or something, like <laughs> anniversaries, <laughs> like these things that don't matter. But so last time we kind of talked to you guys, I know we kind of got a little bit of how things got started. And uh Kenny, if I'm correct in saying it was actually Stegman kind of is the one who got this story he kind of thought up and came to you guys about this. So Ryan, what can you tell us about how you got the schlub going and just turning the gears in your mind? Well, so um, I was going before I did Venom, uh, I was kind of in limbo with what I wanted to do next. And uh, I was I had just done Venom Inc. at Marvel. Um, and I just I, I had this carve out to go do creator own stuff. And um, I thought that that's what I was going to do. Um, and so I came up with this story of, uh, you know, what, what ended up being the schlub. Um, and I started working on it and I, I kind of, you know, I had mapped out a few issues and, uh, you know, done all that stuff. And then um, they called me and asked me if, well, they Marvel was kind of offering stuff. And I was like, no, guys, I'm, I'm over here. I'm going to do this thing. And uh, then, you know, they called and they offered Venom, um, to which I still was like, kind of like, I don't think so. And then, uh, you know, they, they made me talk to Donnie on the phone and, you um, uh, he pitched to me what he was going to be doing. And then I was like, well, I guess this sounds pretty good. So <laughs> and they uh, made you that. talk to him on the phone. They're like, I'm yeah. take notes. Like when you call mom for the right answer, like, Oh man. Right. So then I, um, had this pro project sitting there that I really, you know, was confident in that I thought was a good, uh, story. And, um, I just decided, Hey, you know, um, why don't I just get some friends to work on this with me? And that, and so, you know, Kenny and I, and Kenny and I and Tyrell talk, uh, pretty much every day. And so, um, I just decided to ask these two to, to help me bring it to life. And that's how it started. Nice. Now with you three working on the comic together, cause I feel like a lot of times we talk to comic book creators, they're not in the same room. They're not actually collaborating in the moment together, you know, it's, it's, I write this, send it to you, you draw this and back and forth. So how much do you guys actually collaborate together at one time? I mean, that's I, Kenny and I had our way of working together and then Tyrell, you know, we would send in the script, but Tyrell was definitely involved, um, you know, in, in story decisions and stuff too, because we, you know, we're just talking all the time. Like that's what we, as comic book artists, that's what you do. You just sit and you, you know, we have kind of a group that we all uh, chit chat while we're working. So some stuff comes up that way, too. And then we also, you know, wrote it looser so that Tyrell could make his own interpretations of everything. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the amount that we're, you know, in each other's ears uh, anyway just kind of makes it so, so this process of like you don't really know, uh, you know, where you end and the other person begins. Right. You never remember whose idea it was. Yeah. Um, and well, I do remember good ideas were mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, that I actually had heard that. I believe <laughs> <laughs> from him when we were with him last. No, uh, no. When we talked to Tyrell last time, I was. It was the most collaborative effort I feel like I had heard from talking to comic book creators because mm -hmm. he he had said that it was really a collaborative effort. So, how often are you guys actually in the same room? In person? Yeah. Maybe twice. Well, Tyrell, I think <laughs> I mean, yeah, have we all been in the same room together three times. One one convention together probably yeah i don't know uh That's not exciting. often uh kenny and i probably see each other more because we both live in michigan at different shows yeah. and stuff but you know kenny doesn't actually live close to me right. so i would say not often um but i have kind of found that the um the internet uh you know like with discord and all that stuff i won't say the the program we used to use we were using skype until recently <laughs> um we used skype but, when we started don't worry yeah we used yeah. skype and then we went to zoom and now we we got fancy a little bit yeah <laughs> stream yard rules uh but the uh we, i found that i actually think that there's a little bit of a missed opportunity happening in a lot of comics right now which is there are all these tools out there and that things could be way more collaborative um you know probably you know if you think about uh, marvel in the 
uh, you know, 60s Those and 70s and all sense. that. Yeah, that, that, that those guys were around each other all the time. Well, you can kind of do that now with the internet. It's just that we've separated the um, workflow because there's, um, because people were separated for a while, you know, but now you can go back to that old method. I'm, I'm actually working on something else right now. I can't really talk about, but I'm working with an artist that I'm, and I'm writing something and, you know, it's kind of crazy how symbiotic we can be with how we work because of, you know, getting on discord and doing all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. That's, that's something I think definitely helps. Cause I think a lot of people in their brains who aren't really too familiar with comic books, they like, Oh, these guys, they have to be in the same room together to be able to do this work. Like there's one sitting on the side of the room, the other's writing on the other side. And it's like, no, that's not right. the case. Technology is like Lauren and I have been doing this for four years and we've been together in the same room four or five times now. And it's, it's like you say, it's just thanks to the internet. Uh, it's a really collaborative, just hands mm -hmm. to, together experience. And uh, now diving a little bit into this comic book, you guys kind of have get, gave us a heads up, Kenny and Tyrell, about there was these vigilante types that were just goofballs, man. And that's one of these things about this comic book is everybody, every time I thought I knew where this story was going to go and how it was going to end, it, you pretty much are like, nope. And you're, you're basically the <laughs> GPS telling you to take a left as you're passing by the left. And so what was that like for you guys to kind of, come up with new and inventive ways to be like, well, you think we're going this way, but really we're going this way. Yeah. Well, like, like Ryan said, we would pretty much just like get on the phone and he and I would talk out the whole issue beforehand. And he knew like emotionally and big beats where stuff was going to go. But the more we would talk, the more we would have, Oh, but what if he did this? Or like, because he did that now, what if he does this? Uh, because he was like, Roger's such a rich character. And like the whole setup of him always making the wrong decision, even when he thinks he's making the right one, just kept leading to like better emotional moments and funnier moments um, and led to a lot of like fun world building that we didn't expect of stuff of like Cirrus's dimension um, in Max Terra and all the stuff with the uh, with the henchmen, like the three professional henchmen who show mm -hmm. up in issue two, who they were like, oh, these these three are going to be in the whole book now. Like they could well, have their own book. So funny. <laughs> yeah, they're really the great. One liners and stuff. It was like I think oh, I yeah. have to pause and giggle for a second before I moved mm -hmm. on. And through with the, the whole health, with the health insurance one too. I forget what, <laughs> there was something about health insurance. Oh yeah. Like, oh my god. My doctor said I can't get third degree burns anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we would just like get on the phone and chat, and then figure out the issue. And then I would build it out some more. We talk about it again. And then once we had it where we liked it, we give it to Tyrell. And then Tyrell would go through and be like, what if they said this? Or what if we added this moment? So really, it was very much like Ryan said, like those old Marvel bullpen days. Because we talk so much on the phone, like you said, it's like it's like being in the same room. And we're mm -hmm. completely comfortable like modifying each other's ideas or giving suggestions and stuff. So, and because we joke around all the time anyway, we have very similar senses of humor. So that helped a lot too, in terms mm -hmm. of coming up with jokes and coming up with gags and stuff. And Tyrell's great at doing a bunch of visual gags and putting a lot of emotion into anything and to everything, anything and everything. And he, uh, like, as much as he does incredible with action, he does great with facial expressions and emotion. So that helped through the whole thing too. Right, especially having yeah. a Freaky Friday situation, you need to still see that other character and not their body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was very well done. Yeah, I thought one of the one of the really hard things to do, especially in a comic book, is not only write that these characters have flip flop because Cyrus and Roger they swap bodies, right? And then, but Tyrell, like your artwork, to me, it's the level of detail that you throw in here the the emotion down to like the the wrinkles on the skin almost it's that level of detail and you've captured the swapping perfectly so kind of i know we dove into a little bit like right from the get-go inside the mouth we're like holy shit like this so much goodness in here what was kind of like that for you as we good dove deeper and maybe the city was getting destroyed and the things you were throwing into the the action sequences yeah i mean it what was really awesome was having some some of that leeway that the guys talked about and then and then i think it's really great that they were able to come back and, and do dialogue over 
you know, kind of adapted a little bit to whatever's happening visually. Um, and, and then as I got towards the end of the book, those last two issues, especially, <clears throat> I was really going like as hard as I possibly could. I really wanted them to feel big, but also like I wanted those moments where the, where, where, where Sirius and Roger kind of have these conversations where they're sort of revealing the things that matter to them and revealing the things that, that, that they think they should do or that they don't, not sure if they should do that that felt really um, heavy, you know, not just uh, that the action felt heavy. And so I, I really spent a lot of time, you know, early on in the project. And I, hopefully by the time we get to issues five and six, it really pays off. I, I really tried to think a lot about how, you know, you could show these expressions on, on the wrong, uh, I guess the wrong face, you know, or like the wrong body. Like what does a superhero look like if they don't really have a, a familiarity with moving in super ways? Um, and then by the time we got to that last issue, I just wanted every page to have something awesome for people to come back to again and again and catch, whether that be some goofy thing in the background or some micro sort of, you know, uh, emotional movement of a character's hands or their face or something um, or, 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 or things like that. And so by the time we got to that issue and I read the script, I was just really, I mean, I was really blown away by some of the twists and turns just like you guys were because like, I get to have some input, but a lot of times when I get the first draft of the script, that's the first time I'm hearing where Kenny and Ryan wanted to go with it. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay, all right. You know, and like, you know, so so every time I would get those big twists, I wanted those twists to read big and important, you know, when those pages happen too. So, you know, in a lot of ways it was really, you know, it was really easy and fun because I was very engaged with the story too. Like I was very excited to see what they were going to do. Like, because when we started it, I didn't know the exact ending. Like I didn't know what was going to happen with the relic and what was going to happen with their bodies. And I didn't even know the twist from issue, whatever is four or five, you know, that happens at the end. I didn't see that coming either. And so for me, it was just like imagining my, I, I would feel my reaction reading it and then be like, okay, how can I portray this, you know, in the characters, mm -hmm. you know, how, how can I make this reveal of worms stepping out of the portal and saying, you know what he says right. and, and and how do i make that kind of read as like this ah you know moment so when you guys started writing it did you know when you started working on that first issue how it was going to end because i have to say that ending i just assumed from day one that this one thing was going to happen and again I'm, I'm intentionally being vague because if you haven't read it you should go read it so did you always know that that was how it was going to wrap up at the end of six i mean i feel like we didn't decide how it was going to end until we were halfway through writing issue six. <laughs> oh wow I, so you were just feeling it out basically like no how... i mean we we had a, we had a we had a good idea but we we there were you know there was a there were two directions we could go and we chose okay. you know a specific one at, at that time but uh yeah i mean kind of the the um we'll just say kind of the the thrust of the thing is that roger is this guy that can't get out of his own way and uh he always makes the wrong decision oh there you go he, he said now guys the know. cliffhanger he, he said the cliffhanger oh my gosh oh no yeah. he diverts too much about the plot and the image well kenny how about you <laughs> kenny, you know, kenny put you a hit on him because he was spoiling too much <laughs> um so yeah so anyway as he was probably saying was like we knew emotionally like how it was going to end, I think. And when we got to that middle point, there he is. Okay, he could take back over. I was just <laughs> saying, just, God. Roger, ro yeah, I just disappeared. I don't know why it crashed. Um, Roger, uh, he, he, uh, yeah, so, we, you know, we basically, you want to present that that was the grand statement was he can't get out of his own way. And, uh, you know, that was just something that we wanted to show. Right. Yeah, you kind of did that, but I think almost too like the way you guys wrote the supporting characters was almost more impactful to Roger and the overall story. And for supporting characters, you don't really expect a lot from them, but I think you know his ex-wife and kind of even to a degree the family played an important for both Cyrus and Roger. So, what was it like for you guys, kind of building the supporting characters and deciding how much to? have them play such an impactful role primarily roger's ex-wife into the story do you, do you want me to take it 
No, uh, I, just, I just don't want to talk over everybody the whole time. I feel like okay. I yeah, do. I'll go. <laughs> um, I'll, let me talk about the let me talk about the ex wife, and then Tyrell should talk about the henchman because he helped flush <clears> them out quite a bit. But um, Sarah was always in there, and then as the story went on, it was clear that like Sarah was going to be like the moral compass and like kind of Rogers like guiding light, not with like necessarily trying to get her back, but because we didn't want it to just be like, she exists just as an object of his desire. Like he would like to be better because she knows, he knows that she's a good person and her approval means a lot to him, which is why like a lot of the book isn't about him necessarily trying to win her back or anything. It is about him trying to impress her. But, you know, we didn't want her to just be, like, the object of affection just to be there. We wanted her to be her own character, has her own agency and personality, and has her own thing going on. She just keeps getting wrapped up in stuff because she used to be married to this guy. Uh, <laughs> right. So that was always very important from the jump. Yeah, I liked the development of her character because it wasn't cliche. It wasn't, you know, like you said, the object of, of the affection. Because I remember when we talked with Tyrell, he's like, oh, just wait till she gets, you know, flushed out more and you see her more. So that was fun to see. And the fact that she still cared about him. Because, I mean, honestly, you're with somebody for years just because you're not meant to be romantically involved doesn't mean you don't care about them. You still care about people that were a big part of your life. Um, so one unique thing that happened during this run was, you know, this is an Image comic, and obviously one of the comics that made Image big is The Walking Dead. So you guys got to do a Walking Dead cover to celebrate the 20th anniversary of that comic. So how did that work? Did they tell you how they wanted it to look, or was it just, like, put Michonne in there? Like, how did that work? <laughs> I think it was like, hey, we're doing this. Do you guys want to do one? Uh, it's due in a couple weeks. <laughs> I'm like, I, I guess so. <laughs> so yeah, that was I think the extent of the direction, and then they I think it's they said something like it has to have a Walking Dead character on it, and my favorite character, and I think everybody's favorite character is Michonne, and I also thought that would be a good foil. She's got such a confidence and swagger. I thought that was good to juxtapose her with the other two, and you got sort of Sirius and Roger's body trying to look tough, but he's kind of corny, and then you have you know Roger and Sirius's body looking kind of scared. Uh, that was a really fun uh, cover to do. I, I was I was glad we did it, even though at the time I was like, "Oh my gosh, when am I gonna when am I gonna draw this?" They're like, "You have <laughs> till tomorrow. Good luck." <laughs> <laughs> but no, I thought like all their covers were great. All the artwork was great. I know um, Tyrell Ryan even got his hand in some of the variant covers and things like that. And this kind of going back to the characters too. Uh, the character, you know, Worm is our main antagonist. And so I think something that's very hard to do is you make villains sympathetic. It's very hard to kind of do that. But you guys found a way to do so. What was it like creating this character of Worm who's going to drive the story? He's obviously the villain. I don't is know. He, he at the I end of the day, I, like, is yeah. he? Well, it makes me happy that you're questioning that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has Worm a point. All I'm going to say. Over. Yeah, he definitely does. I'd be mad if I were him. Yeah. What? Uh, so, yeah, what was it like creating him? Well, I mean, we, you know, it was it, basically the one thing that I will say is when I was uh, when I was making this in my first attempt, you know, where I was trying to make it an image comic um, but that I was going to do by myself, for whatever reason, I was uh, too dumb to realize that I needed to have um, a villain and so i kept running up against this thing where i was like well who's who's uh he fighting and then i you know i couldn't figure it out but then like right when i decided i was going to ask kenny and tyrell i was like oh i know what the villain is and now you know this makes sense to me and so i kind of presented the idea just the the essential idea of that he was a guy who um you know roger had or, or Sirius had body swapped with when he was, you know, a kid. Uh, and then from there, I mean, it was just Kenny and I came up with a name and started fleshing him out a little bit. And then Tyrell, I don't even know if we gave you much direction other than that he needed like a, that, that pack on his back. Said like, I think they said he needs some magic shit, some technology. Yeah. <laughs> magic shit. <laughs> right. And, and Tyrell sent us one, I think that uh, like it took us a few, iterations of cirrus to get him right but uh he sent us worm and it was like right away it was just that's it you know it was one it was like one and done and so being an artist yourself were there any times that you wanted to like 
draw up and send over to Tyrell at all? Or were you pretty much just, I'm going to focus like Tyrell, this is all you, man. I'm not even going to tempt myself. Well, I wouldn't have hired Tyrell if I didn't, you know, fully trust him. Uh, yeah. So that really, I mean, that's, that's the truth is that I, I felt like I was getting to see this world for the first time, you know, through his eyes. I, I think that there was, he did some designs of Roger himself that I was like, I had already done some drawings of him. So I was like, Oh no, here's what I did. And, you know, do it a little closer to this. And then he did his own interpretation of that. But uh, I think that's really the only art contribution I really made beyond, you know, other than just saying like, you know, some BS whenever you turn something in, like, good job. Uh, what about a little bit of this, you know, like the most annoying <laughs> thing you can possibly do to an artist. Um, and I still did it anyway. <laughs> that's great. What about a little bit more pizzazz or some yeah. just ridiculousness? Well, we'll try it this way. I don't think <laughs> I, I don't ever know. had a note on a page or anything like be, after that, like I never, I just was like, you know, everything was exactly as it should be. I think I was the one with notes <laughs> all mm -hmm. the time. I was, I'm always like obsessed, but honestly, like it can go either way when you work with somebody who can draw too, especially someone who can draw as well as Ryan, you, you, you know, you can get somebody who tries to art direct it. But I think what Ryan did, which I'm very grateful for was he, he, gave me what I think most artists want, which he probably wants it, which is a little bit of freedom to, to kind of bring yourself into it and, and add something to it visually and then have that affect the story. And I think that that's where our magic came from was that there was so much of, of the influence of each other on each step that it felt, you know, very much like everybody had a little bit of a voice and, and instead of it just being like Ryan demanding, you know, do this, do that, do the other thing. Yeah, I was kind of glad that when we went into it that I hadn't d gotten down to the a lot of the design work because I, I feel like that could have been stifling and I definitely would have felt like, well, you know, like I, I feel like I would have been overly involved then. But, I, uh, you know, like I said, like I I didn't have any of that stuff. So when Tyrell would send it, it's, that's just that's now how I see the world of the schlub, you know, through through Tyrell's eyes beautiful i wish man i wish the my own world looked as beautiful as what tyrell gave us because it again the the level of detail and uh, i want to get back to that detail in a second but going back to worm for a second there's obviously a lot more backstory there and then you guys did a really good job of kind of also like laying i know there's more plans in your guys's head and that's up to you know how well the comic does and things like that but the backstory is that one of those things that you guys are interested in telling at some point going into the the whole body swap between worm and Sirius at all uh, absolutely for me i mean that that was the that's the story is the um is is all the uh you know the the the, the main crux of the story for me is is uh roger's uh, relationship with his family and then Sirius's relationship with his family and Obviously, you know, a, a father that would do what uh, Cirrus's dad did to Worm um, is probably an interesting character. So for me, yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to do more of that stuff. But Kenny doesn't yeah. want to do any more. So. Oh, Kenny. I told Kenny him, I was like, <laughs> this sucks. I'm the worst. You shouldn't have me worth. No, I would totally like. Obviously, I don't want to spoil it. Like, there is an opening, should we continue, that would explore a ton more of that stuff uh, mm -hmm. and see more of that perspective. So, yeah, I would totally love Because it. I, I feel like a lot of the best scenes in this book where all of us were firing on all cylinders were the emotional moments like the the family dinner scene, which I, Ryan wanted in there from the get-go. He knew it was, mm -hmm. like, super important. Um that's a huge one. The stuff yeah. with uh, the stuff with Roger realizing like, oh shit, Cirrus's family's as bad as mine. Like uh, <laughs> when he's trying to play along and hide there, all that stuff's really good. The blind date uh, scene was a big one that I felt like all three of us were fired on like humor and emotional stuff to show like Roger realizing like this body isn't all cracked up to be. All those family dynamics, whether it's between Roger and his dad or Roger and his ex-wife or Cirrus and his dad or um, the people that knew Cirrus beforehand, all the other characters, 
those I felt like were the greatest moments. And we would totally expand on that, especially from the Max Terra point of view. Um, if we mm-hmm. keep going, I definitely want to draw more Max Terra. And, you know, the, all the side characters, I agree. Like the, the both of them have sisters too. I will have maybe more than, you know, there, there's the, the sister that talks to Roger at the end of issue four. And then the, the sister in, in Sirius's realm. And, and I found those two to be very intriguing, the sisters mm-hmm. and brothers, not just the parents. And I was mm-hmm. so excited to, I mean, I'm still excited to see where the, what those characters could contribute to to the situations. You know, you have the one sister who's kind of like, something's wrong with you. You're like, what, what's going on, you know? And the other right. sister knows there's something going on and is trying to use it to their advantage. And I, I love all those family dynamics. That's That's really, you know fun stuff in the middle of all this like family superhero drama stuff i, I loved all that right and it makes it so one of them... oh, go ahead. Oh, i'm sorry i was gonna say i can't remember doesn't one of them accuse him of like being a skinwalker or something like that's what she thinks <laughs> yes yeah. she figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> I was sorry that. lord i, I didn't like, mean to yes. interrupt you no you're, just, you're good woman. yes yeah, my brother said to me maybe two weeks ago he goes you say the meanest things in the world to me and i can say the meanest things in the world to you and it doesn't impact either of us in a bad way (laughs) and so you just have a you know siblings are just a unique dynamic no matter how you were raised or or what there's just a special connection that you could just be the worst people in the world to each other but know that you still love each other i mean some of them can still be playing toxic which we saw a little bit more of that in these the this comic but my my sister my sister once said to me that uh she said, see, if I wasn't so mean to you when you were a kid, you wouldn't have withdrawn into comic books and become a comic book artist. <laughs> You're like, is that, it's, it's like, I don't like, how do you take that? I, I thanks, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess you're responsible for all this. You. <laughs> it's like anytime, just think of me and know that you wouldn't have gotten here without me. And you're like, you're right. You're right. Well, now, yeah. I'm pay- now I'm paying her a per- percentage for some reason. I don't know how that- <laughs> She's like, that'd be 10%. And you're like, wait, yeah. what? She was, you heard me 20 bucks, little man. Everybody wants a cut. <laughs> My brother takes credit for us having a beer podcast. Cause he introduced me to dogfish head like a million years ago. <laughs> and he drinks PBR. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's right. I actually introduced, I take all the credit for Lauren liking star Wars too. So you're welcome, Lauren. Well, Disney gets a lot of that credit too because they changed Aww. half of one of their parks to Star Wars. And I was like, well, if I still, because I live in Orlando, if I'm still going to go to this park, I might as well watch a Star <laughs> Wars movie. That's a very roundabout way to get to Star Wars. I like that. <laughs> yeah, really. The yeah, mouse. but now I'm reading the books and the comics and we're watching the cartoons. Dang. So I'm full yeah. in now. Yeah, it happened quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Tyra, one of the things we talked about you last time were all the Easter eggs and all the fun things in, in the background. So, what were some of uh, the most fun Easter eggs that you did plant in the later comics? Um, Cause we talked about, I think issue one when we, when we first. Yeah. Started. Well, some of the stuff continues to the whole thing. You know, there's, there's a couple animals that make their appearance throughout um, in issue six. There's a character from issue one that pops up in the corner of a, a panel. Uh, someone who may, maybe we were inside their mouth. Um, oh. <laughs> And then uh, I, I tried to hide a bunch of the people from our, you know, regular chat groups names all over. Some of them got covered. You can see them on the original art, which is on my website right now. But there's like, uh, you know, I put like, you know, Stegman's name in there and Kenny's name in there, of course. I put Dan, Daniel Warren Johnson in there. Sanford Green is in there. There's there's a bunch of different touch, you know, little touch points from the Ryan. Both the Ryan and Sean Lee have appearances na- by name. Um and then, you know, the other thing that was fun was wasn't just necessarily the hidden like people I know and stuff, the, the breaking of the fourth wall stuff, but finding ways in some of those bigger action scenes to have depth to the to the action. So so maybe on the first look through, you see the punch in the foreground, but maybe on the third or fourth look through, you see what another character is doing behind that. And then you see what another character is doing in the middle of, of those panels. So um a big thing with me when I'm when I'm working on stuff is is I want people to to have a reason to go back and, and look at it again. You know, hopefully read it again too, but like look at it again and sort of just find maybe uh, some more depth there. And and hopefully that enhances the story. Like some of it's goofy stuff, like putting people's names in there, but other things are maybe a character's expression in the background of a shot or how they react to a a character delivering a line. So there's a lot of times when when the, the main characters are given soliloquies or, or having big moments where they say things. And I was always thinking about, well, what's, you know, what's the henchman thinking about that in the background? Or what's Sarah feeling about that in the background and, and trying to put that look on their face or 
or give them some kind of a reaction that was, um, you know, given some insight into their character too in that moment. Mm hmm. Yeah, many comics, it's like, you know, dead space or white in the background. I don't yeah. think that that happened in any panel. On the, in no, the I, I, one reviewer said there was too much art. <laughs> it made him not <laughs> able to read the story. I was like, I think the art's part I of the think, story. I could be wrong. Right. Yeah. Then maybe he should pick up a regular book. <laughs> yeah, sure. right. There's, what if there's no, yeah, I because for me, uh, personally, maybe it's just because my brain runs ADHD at all hours of the day. But I thought like it was that was the beauty of it. I mean, you had the words and the story of going on. Literally. Then half the fun when you're reading a comic book is all right, what can I find panel to panel? And it really even also gets you to slow down because a lot of people just breeze through it. You know, when yeah. you pay, a lot of people just pick up a comic, they're breezing through it. But you guys give something, and I think for what really connected this comic for me was the fact that you had six issues and for some people that's not a lot but you guys really hit it all i mean a lot in there the, the emotional moments you made us care about these characters in a very short period of time uh now there's like threads we can go to you know sirius's world we can continue seeing what happens in roger's life we can see the henchmen we there's so many different ways you can go and uh, even at one point, you're like, these heroes are awful. Like, I'm not rooting for anybody at this point. Yeah, nobody's really, a good person. In this. Yeah, you're like, oh, everybody sucks. Like, I want worm I mean, to that's win. reality. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's but the thing. I, they feel like the, when, when, when they feel like they suck sometimes, like, the, but they suck in a way that you understand from your regular life. You're like, I know a guy like that guy. You know, I know a, a lady like that lady. And, and and so you're kind of like, your your sort of engagement with them is, even though they're like Captain Skyhawk or whoever, they have something that makes them feel a little more relatable, you know, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I think it was issue four. I don't remember exactly. The issue after we met the siblings, like when Matt and I, because we start every podcast, what did we read or watch this week? And, you know, we try to give non-spoiler, just recommendation kind of things. And both of us, I was like, this is my favorite issue so far. And Matt right away was like, this is my favorite issue so far too. Because it really, it just, yeah, it, it humanized both of them and and made you have like empathy for both of them. And it was the first time you really felt felt for them. Whereas, I mean, there's so much action and comedy and heart. And those are my favorite stories are the ones that they hit all of it. The action, the comedy and the heart. Yeah. Those are the best. And Again, it's pretty. Like, the six issues that you guys had to work with, you really you did it. You did. You hit every, <laughs> Congratulations. You you hit did everything it. like it was truly <laughs> like an amazing episode. achievement. Um, Did it feel was it like easy for you guys to kind of just did it feel natural then or is this kind of like we have to hit these moments or was it just like <laughs> dude we we got ourselves a gold mine right here well, I'll, I'll i beat that, myself up oh go ahead Brian. i was gonna say that i personally feel like this was the, the the ability to get everything in is all uh to kenny um you know i this is I haven't written that much stuff. I've written some stuff for Marvel and all that, but this was a sprawling story and I was just throwing things at him left and right. And Kenny would, you know, is great at taking those things and being like, okay, well, here's how this would work, you know, within a story. And uh, so, yeah, I, all the credit for that goes to him. I, I like, I stress out about anything that I do because <laughs> I like, I want to make sure every single thing is great. And that's like, Ryan's ideas are getting through. My ideas are getting through. Tyrell's getting a chance to shine. So if it looked effortless, awesome. But like, that's probably just because I always put on myself too much to just think about it. And Ryan was very gracious to let me text him constantly <laughs> to be like, what if, what do they do this? Is this good? Like what if we could do this? And he was just like, yeah, man. Yeah. Whatever. Like, He's like yeah, I'm watching a movie right now. Do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I did enjoy that aspect of it, which was we would talk on the phone about it and we'd come up with ideas and then we'd inevitably hang up and then just flurry text each other for like the next two hours, <laughs> you know, because like, oh, wait, I should have said, you know, and then you have it all there in the text messages. So, well, then you can go back to it, too. That's like mm -hmm. taking notes. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I was, uh, I was, I was drawing like it was the last comic I would ever draw. <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to make this the <laughs> fucking hardest thing that has ever come in, across the comic scene. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I maybe, you know, I don't know if I was stressed. It got easier as time went on, honestly, because the after a, a couple issues, I mean, working with these two was great. And then seeing what Mike was doing just made me feel so confident. You know, like 
Mike's colors. I was like, okay, like even on the pages that I think I didn't do great on, Mike nailed it, you know? And so as time went on, I got braver and braver and tried bigger and newer things. And I think, you know, it, it kind of felt right for how the book progressed too, for it to just kind of grow and grow and grow to this crescendo by issue six. Yeah, and I want to reiterate, the stress was all me making sure I wasn't going to fail my friends. So that was <laughs> that was all my own regular crazy anxieties. <laughs> Not any stress from working together with these guys. Right. God, you guys are so stressful. We're never doing this again. <laughs> all those threads. <laughs> goodbye. Um, is there, so out of all the moments, is there a moment to you guys that was your personal favorite that you guys did in this, this arc? I, there's two that I really love that I think are two, they're two vastly different moments that I think are awesome. One is, the one that was really uh, was really fun to write when Ryan and I were talking about doing the dinner scene where Sirius just like offhandedly thanks the guy for refilling his wine and the dad is like, <laughs> the fuck did you just say? Like, you thanking him when I paid for this? Like, Ryan had like pitched that to me and we worked that through and stuff. And I think that that moment like really immediately is just like, oh shit, like his dad's a bad man. Like, like, yeah. that's, like in one moment like shows you and then the other one just because i think it's a really dumb great gag is the the villa that ryan and i came up with smorgasbord who has like a bunch of the dumb bad powers uh when he does the bit where he like has a binocular power and he looks through his eyes like this to see cirrus from far away yes or it's roger coming at him and then lowers it uh, that to me is just a fun visual gag because I hadn't done humor in a while. Like I'd written comedy since like Barnstormer. So it was fun to write visual gags and stuff with these guys too. And I thought like those were two of my favorite moments, but what were your guys' favorite ones? Um, I mean, I, I got to go with the dis di the dinner scene. I mean, that was kind of the grand statement of the whole thing. I feel like, you know, that, and then showing uh, Cirrus with his father. So because that was the you know the backbone of the story to me um those were the most important moments and i think that they both came out really great the dinner scene was was definitely one of the few that did stress me out quite a bit because it, it was like characters <laughs> sitting around at the table talking and i was like oh my gosh i can't just put sparks and smoke all over this i can't just make some guy punching <laughs> like i have to actually I never would have written that for myself. I know that much. <laughs> but I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, for me, it's it's maybe a little different. I, I like the scene where the the henchmen are are kind of beating up their old boss and uh, talking about all the things they want to do with their money, and and that felt cathartic for me. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was the kind of thing that I feel like a lot of us can relate to of just this frustration and kind of like. Just they're just like beating him down, you know, like like gang initiation style, you know. And uh, the other one is it, that I I'm really proud of and really just felt like this great big crescendo that that when it hit it hit is when the giant turtle castle comes to the city through the portal. I was just like so stressed about doing it justice, and I I feel really awesome about that about that panel and that page. Yeah, just like. Yes, like this is now we have just upped the ante. Like it is just now it's on, you know, that that's kind of the feeling I, I wanted it to have. And I, I feel good about that. I love that There's... answer. And I, I never would have thought like, oh, I don't want to draw a table scene. Like I, that never crossed my mind of like, how can I make this conversation look interesting? Mm -hmm. So that was that was an interesting one to hear. Go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry I cut you off. No, I was just going to say, and, uh, you know, real quick, too, also I want to do shout out to uh, John J. Hill and Mike Spicer for their lettering and their coloring on this because the five of you went to town and all these really good moments. And I love seeing that the dinner scene is mostly everyone's favorite or in Tyrell's the most stressful it was just because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's such a it's like a simple sequence. And then I think a lot of us can also relate to our own families like Thanksgiving or getting together a family. Mm -hmm. It's. I know at least for me, uh, my parents are a lot. Um, we're just a bunch of bo Bostonians who are just loud, obnoxious, and just Not my mom. Emotion. Yeah, you know, my mom and Lauren. So those are really good ones. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. Did I hear talk of Hollywood by chance when I was at MegaCon? Uh, maybe. I mean, you know, hopefully, but uh, I can't say much about that. 
there was, That's fair. you know, there's, there's been interest. I mean, there, there, you know, the, these things always have kind of, um, you know, possibilities outside of just the public publishing. So, you know, if that happened, hopefully we, then we would be able to do more. So mm-hmm. that would be, know. yeah. I, I want more from this universe. I mean, if, I will personally if, confirm that Hollywood is a place that exists. What's a really cool Star Wars cantina actually on this on the strip? Uh, the Scum and Villainy, great place. Hey, we have a Hollywood in Florida as well. You can go to Jimmy. You can go to Margarita. Not everything on the has beach. to revolve around Florida. Okay. Every great story, the good and the bad, starts in Florida somehow. Even the Tiger King man, that <laughs> documentary started in Florida. Oh boy, Can't you're all right. It. Uh, but, you know, in this day and age, you know, people talk about superhero fatigue, which I have no fatigue. Give me all the superhero stuff. I don't know. But one thing, you know, people are still loving the boys and Invincible and they are loving unique superhero stories. And that's what this is. Mm-hmm. I mean, because no superhero is all good and no villains all bad. So you guys are not going anywhere, really. I mean, there's a certain kind of film that has sort of big become you know, maybe a little oversaturated right now, but I don't think that that type of film encompasses all kinds of superhero stories. And we've had superhero stories since the beginning of time. I mean, we're going to continue to have superhero yeah. stories, you know, never. And I would say anywhere, like, yeah. Yeah. And I'd say like you guys said, like invincible and the boys are like good touchstones for like, if you like that sort of different take mm-hmm. on superhero stuff and stories where you can do stuff that you can't do at DC and Marvel, like the schlubs, the perfect book for you to pick up if you haven't picked it up. Yep. So, oh. That's like right in that vein. Mm-hmm. And so we, as we start to wrap up, we heard Kenny's kind of one line pitch. I want to hear you guys overall, if you could just, you got one line, one sentence to pitch this to anybody out there. Um, I know you guys get a whole panel to pitch this to people, but what would be your, your quick pitch to the casual reader that just looking for a comic to pick up? Uh, my, my quick one from the beginning was, uh, uh, what if uh, it's like, if Michael Scott, uh, got superpowers. (laughs) Yeah. He is Michael Scott. (laughs) Oh, that's good. Kenny's the pitch guy. So what if, uh, what if Kenny made Tyrell draw a big turtle (laughs) castle and (laughs) made him draw it over and over and over? That's that's my other pitch um aside from that yeah i'd say that like i said it's uh it's like the freaky friday sort of thing meets the world of like invincible or even one punch man like for those Mm -hmm. manga fans of like the big crazy bombastic weird superheroes uh sort of thing so stack those on top of each other yeah and i i mean they're those are the good pitches so mine doesn't have to be as good mine's basically you know, if if you if 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 you miss a certain kind of comic and you're hoping that uh, comics would have that same kind of energy again that that makes you excited to look at every issue and excited to read and find out what's happening, and especially superhero comics, then this is the one for you. That we 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 pull no punches, we have no baggage. It is just the characters on their journey, and it is a blast. It is. It is. Pull no punches. I Lauren, do you have anything before we start to hear wrap up here? No, I think I'm good. Go get uh, if you you can buy all six issues now. But if you want to wait for the trade back, April 23rd, like they said, go to your local comic book shop. Yeah, guys, you pre-order seriously. through comic stores, through traditional bookstores, everywhere. You can get the yeah, trade I mean, anywhere. No excuses. Amazon yep. even. It, yeah, you, can go you don't even Amazon have to leave your house. Okay? It could be here like the next day, not like literally the next day because it doesn't come out till April 23rd. Right. But if you're like, hey, April 22nd, I'm gonna drop an order on Amazon because you know I've had a glass of wine and I'm feeling spicy. <laughs> By all means, do so. It's it's. Feeling I can't spicy. tell you how in love with this comic I am, and that's not just because you guys are in front of me. Like Thank this you. is one that uh, I read, got to pick up from the start, and it has been such a pleasure. I know I'm selfishly wanting more as I'm sure you guys want to tell more of these stories. So thank you guys for telling at least these six issues of a, just a really fucking good comic, man. Just thank you for that. And <laughs> there's as we wrap, it's a really the, fucking good comic. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it's just, it's good. And so as we wrap up, let people know where they can find you guys and uh, any parting shots. Well, you can find me on uh, any of the socials at T Cannon Comics. Uh, you can also find me at C2E2 in April in Artist Alley. I don't know where yet, but somewhere. And at the Schlub panel. 
And then uh, you can also find me on, on, on YouTube as well. I do streams pretty much once every week or two. And so I would love it if people could come by and check it out and, 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 and visit the website, tyrellcannon.com. That's where you can find all my stuff. Will you, you have commissioned at the some fine. I will have some prints. I will probably have some schlub posters. I will have some schlub original art. I will have probably every you have stickers. I will have stickers, chibi style schlub stickers. I will have, uh, uh, some schlub variants, and I will have some some other cool stuff like uh, X Men books and things like that. My wife loves the stickers, by the way. She put one on her work laptop. Yes, those stickers are Roger. awesome. Like yeah. I saw you drop those. Those are I, I'm a sticker. Like I love stickers. You were gonna so those say more, weren't you? <laughs> I was, but I was like, I don't want anybody to get upset that I called myself a sticker slut. But here I am. So, <laughs> uh, Kenny Ryan, where or Kenny, where can they people find you? Uh, you can find my stuff at portercomics.com and then I'm on all the socials mostly as at Ken Blake Porter because most of just at Kenny Porters were taken already <laughs> when I joined up. So use my middle name. It's at Ken Blake Porter. You can find me Instagram, Twitter. I refuse to call it the other thing. Oh, uh, right. We don't call it the other thing. Guy, Twitter, all that Twitter. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you can find me all there and I usually keep things pretty up to date on the website in terms of like new stuff that's coming out. I also put pre-order links and stuff there so you can go there if you want to try to find your favorite place to pre-order the book as well. Nice. Ryan, where can we find you? Can, you? My uh, social media name on everything is just Ryan Stegman. Very creative. Uh, you can find me on the Peloton also at Ryan Stegman. Uh <laughs> Actually, you um, say that, but I'm on the Peloton damn near every day myself. So, all right, well, I'll, I'll see you on there. Uh, <laughs> add me when we get off here. Um, there we go. And uh, I will be at, you know, I'll be at C2E2. I'll be at, I don't know, I have a whole list of conventions I'll be at, but uh, I don't know what they are. And I let other people handle that. So, I just, <laughs> I just show up at the airport when they tell me to. They say be at the airport, you're flying out this time, and then you're going to land in some city, and there you go. Right. <laughs> and then uh, I have uh, two secret projects that I'm going to announce right now. No, I can't announce them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, some announcements coming soon. So so keep uh, keep your eyes peeled. Brian's really excited about what he's working on. I know that. Oh, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be fire without a doubt, um, especially anything you guys touch. You know, I'm I'm getting my hands on it. Uh, for sure, without a doubt. And my son also has been reading a lot of the old, the Venoms you've been working on because he's eight oh, and sweet. into comics. And so Venom is like his life. He's got Venom mm -hmm. Crocs, all that stuff. So <laughs> that's his life right now. He's just an eight-year-old boy, just a dude being a dude reading. He's like, it, comic books have honestly, between that and some of the Justice League Godzilla comic books out right now, he's been very interested in reading. And uh, I got to thank fine people like yourselves for for making this stuff happen so that way he can he can learn to read and we can have something to talk about so all right thank you guys you. hanging out lauren we'll see you soon but everybody else make sure you subscribe all that good fancy jazz that makes me feel like i'm 18 years old again and we will see you next week catch these guys at their panel please by all means and then make sure you're seeing us this week at awesome con where I will be hosting just you, the, not me, just me. I know, but I will be there hosting an MCU panel. And then the following weekend, St. Patty's day weekend, come get, get all in the festive spirit. And, uh, we have two panels, comic books. You should be reading the schlub's going to be highlighted. Kyle Higgins is joining that panel, believe it or not. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a history of Batman panel that Saturday night. So come hang out. We'll see everybody there and cheers.